Well, hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking all about alcohol. And no, not alcohols and skincare products, although I do have a video on that, which I'll link down below if you're interested. But we're gonna be talking about alcoholic beverages. About a year or so ago, I made a video discussing how consuming alcohol in excess can have some pretty negative consequences to the health of your skin. People who are heavy drinkers have more prominent signs of skin aging, deeper wrinkles. Alcohol depletes the skin of its antioxidant reservoirs, so it gets in the way of proper healing and barrier recovery, leading to more dryness. But you've probably heard someone along the way say, eh, alcohol in moderation, it's good for your heart. Well, a few days ago, the World Heart Federation came out with a policy statement saying that there is no amount of alcohol consumption that can be considered good for your heart. There's no amount of safe alcohol consumption. They really felt that it was imperative to speak up about the negative health consequences of consuming alcohol, as well as the socioeconomic harms that come with alcohol consumption. Now, their policy statement largely referenced a study that was published in The Lancet. This study showed that globally, alcohol was responsible for 3 million deaths in 2016. It's a pretty bold statement to make that there is no such thing as a safe amount of alcohol for your heart. I mean, basically they're saying that any amount of alcohol is too much. Alcohol consumption has been linked with a variety of adverse health effects. It is associated with cardiovascular disease, coronary disease, um, stroke, atrial fibrillation, which is a problem with the rhythm in the heart, heart failure, cardiomyopathy, and hypertensive heart disease. It's also linked with a variety of cancers. They're going so far as to say that if you're an adult and you don't drink, do not start. That seems a little bit intense. Let me know in the comments what you think about that recommendation. I mean, is there a reason to start drinking? I guess when you really think about it, no, but they also say that if you are an adult and you do drink, to talk to your healthcare provider about healthier habits, which is a little neb nebulous and vague. Anyways, aside from heart disease, cancer, and a variety of other health conditions, you also cannot ignore the societal harm that comes from alcohol consumption. Obviously, motor vehicle accidents. Alcohol is responsible for a lot of injuries, a lot of time missed from work, and it's also responsible for violence, violence in the home, domestic violence. Children whose parents are alcoholics, addicted to alcohol, they are much more likely to also consume alcohol in excess as an adult. They also point out that in studies, it has been shown that individuals with, of lower socioeconomic status suffer disproportionately more harm from alcohol consumption than those of higher socioeconomic status. Now, to what extent that could be explained by simply less, more restricted access to preventative care. For example, if we're talking about high blood pressure, which they point out that alcohol increases the risk of hypertensive heart disease, with high blood pressure, it's not something that you really realize happens unless you are going to the doctor and it is detected. I mean, unless you have a home blood pressure monitor and it's something that you're really on top of, but most people you know, are, who have high blood pressure, unless it's picked up in, in the doctor's office, they're often blindly unaware. And so that goes untreated, and well, then you are more likely to have adverse effects from alcohol consumption. But they also say that 1% of the GDP in high and mid-income countries is spent on alcohol-associated costs, including to the criminal justice system and lost productivity. Does anybody else pick up on the irony of me talking about alcohol and motor vehicle accidents and then all of a sudden there's somebody out there revving their engine and drag racing? Whether you want to admit it or not, it cannot be ignored that alcohol has negative health consequences and it also brings about harm to society. Um, you know, you lose your inhibitions and you're more likely to engage in high risk behaviors when you're consuming alcohol that put you and others at risk. But let me know in the comments, do you think that it is a bit of a, a stern statement to say that there is no such thing as a safe amount of alcohol for the heart? It seems a little bit conflicting though, because if you look at areas of the world which are referred to as the blue zones that have a longer lifespan, uh, some of these blue zones associated with where the people have a long life, uh, they're kind of areas known for longevity, some of these areas, they regularly are consuming wine um, or alcohol as part of their culture. So if it is that 
harmful, then how are these people living? Probably due to other factors in their lifestyle. They're more likely to also in these areas be eating fruits and vegetables, getting exercise, managing their stress. So it is more, you know, more than the presence or absence of alcohol as a predictor of their overall health in these people. Plus it could also be a, you know, a genetic influence, but to say that, I think it is a little bit strict to say that there's no safe amount of alcohol, especially given, you know, how do you explain these populations that live so long and continue to consume alcohol? Granted, they're not consuming alcohol in excess. And there also are some other studies, albeit they're observational studies, that do show some benefit to moderate amounts of alcohol consumption for things like heart disease. Um, they're not perfect studies by any means, they have flaws, but you know, to say that there is no safe amount for your heart. So I really think pattern of consumption matters a lot. People who binge drink, we already know. People who binge drink large amounts of alcohol, they, we already know that has a lot of, of harm. Alcohol, it is a toxin, and so if you're drinking a ton in one day, that is too much. Is it as harmful though to your heart, to your overall health? If you have a tiny, small amount, like say with a meal on a daily basis, I, I really think pattern matters. I also think type of alcohol matters as well. They don't, they don't, <clears throat> this study doesn't account for the type of alcohol and I believe that matters as well. Red wine, for example, has resveratrol, which is an antioxidant, a flavonoid, and is associated with health benefits. Of course, you can get that from eating grapes. You don't have to drink red wine. But my point is, this study from The Lancet, it doesn't, it doesn't look at pattern of alcohol consumption, and it doesn't look at the type of alcohol consumed. I do find it a little interesting that they mention that if you are an adult who's otherwise healthy and you currently consume alcohol, like talk to your doctor about healthier habits. I found that incredibly vague. Um, a moderate amount is considered, uh, or what is safe or recommended to be okay, is two drinks per day for men and one drink or less for women. So what constitutes a drink then? In the US, it's a 12 ounce beer, eight ounces of malt liquor, five ounces of wine, one and a half ounces of a liquor, that's a shot, when you go out to a restaurant or to a bar, there is more of a standardization with which they serve you. But again, that too can vary from location to location. Um, but at home, you know, I think all of this goes out the window if you are, say, having a party or something in your home, or you know, you're just enjoying alcohol a little bit too much. You can easily go over these amounts. Alcohol removes inhibitions, <laughs> all of them. And so how likely are you to restrict something when you are disinhibited? And I also think it's going to vary a lot from person to person depending on your genetics and your race even. As a matter of fact, many Asian people, actually many Asian uh, Asians have a lower risk of alcoholism and it's thought to be due to two factors. One, maybe cultural, and two, genetics because many Asians have uh, mutations in the genes that encode the enzymes that, that metabolize alcohol. They, so they don't metabolize alcohol as well, and they get a buildup of one of the intermediary metabolites, it's called acetaldehyde, and that leads to flushing, they turn, you know, turning red, nausea, vomiting, headache. I mean, they feel, it makes you feel horrible. So there's not as much incentive there to, to drink. They have more of an immediate adverse effect, whereas, Others who metabolize alcohol, you know, better, well, they don't feel bad until the next day. So there's less of a negative association there. Roughly half of Chinese, Japanese, and Korean people do have these, um, do have these uh, gene mutations in the enzymes that metabolize alcohol and are at risk for this. So, you know, for them, the recommendation probably shouldn't be the same, it should probably be less. Um, because their you know, genetics and, and what have you, they don't metabolize alcohol as well. And that buildup intermediary, the acetaldehyde, it's, it's quite toxic. I mean, it makes you feel very ill. And then there are some people who probably just should not drink at all, either because they have an underlying medical condition, maybe a history of some sort of heart problem, 
But the other thing that definitely needs to, there needs to be more messaging around is how harmful alcohol in any amount, honestly, can be for people who have mental um, psychiatric illness, depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder. I honestly think that alcohol, this is just my opinion, I think alcohol should come with a warning about its a, a potential to affect your mood. Uh, because for people with mood disorders, um, it, it really can be quite quite a dangerous mix. Not to mention medications they may be taking, you know, interact with alcohol. So I, I you know, alcohol comes with a warning about not drinking during pregnancy, uh, which I didn't mention, but I assume people know you don't want to drink alcohol in pregnancy because it will cause, you know, it can cause quite a bit of fetal harm. Um, so yeah, there's that. But what I was saying is like, I think that alcohol should also come with a warning about like how it could actually put you at risk for worsening of an underlying mood disorder. I mean, for sure. And people who have mood disorders, they are more likely to turn to alcohol to self-medicate and it actually then worsens their underlying mood disorder and can really put them in a lot of harm, not only for developing alcoholism, but you know, for having their mental health deteriorate in a really, really harmful way. So I, I think that alcohol should kind of come with a warning for that. That's just my opinion though. Then there's the whole issue with how our society views alcohol. It's, you know, I, I made the decision a while ago that I was not going to drink alcohol. I simply don't enjoy it. But honestly, I have to say, it can be challenging in certain social situations because people almost react negatively to you if you say, oh no, I don't drink. Um, unless you're pregnant, then you know they often ask you, are you pregnant if you're a woman? Unless you're pregnant, then it's like, you better have a good reason. Like you better have a documented allergy to it or something, or people are just like a lot of times very uncomfortable with that, which you know I guess is just some kind of social conditioning. And it makes, it can be a very tricky thing to navigate. There is, you know, it's kind of odd in our society that there's kind of this idea that you need alcohol to have a good time or that it's almost a required presence at social gatherings. And so, you know, it's fine to have that and to enjoy it or whatever, but like if you choose to abstain, it can actually be very awkward and you can almost feel like pressured into drinking even if you don't want to. So it's definitely not, you know, it's something that people need to be aware of to not judge other people for, you know, choosing to drink or not drink, you know, it's just not a helpful behavior to be so worried about what other people are doing all the time. You know, this World Heart Federation, they propose some ideas about, you know, restricting access. They also suggest restricting ads and, you know, sponsorship type promotional things around alcohol, which I do think is helpful because Honestly, ads do heavily influence human behavior and seeing an ad for alcohol is definitely something that could trigger somebody to want to drink alcohol. Yeah, I think it's interesting on YouTube. I have seen several videos where the video is sponsored by like a wine subscription service or something. And you know, I don't have any problem with that, but I do think it's interesting. Like obviously whenever there's sponsored content, the, um, you know, we're required to disclose that to you guys. Uh, verbally and then we're required when we upload the video to check a box and that's why on sponsored videos you always see at the top of the video you'll see something that says and paid promotion so you, you know there's a portion of the video that's gonna have an ad uh, done by by the by the youtuber and that's all well and good I think you know you need to have that but there's nothing that clues the person into the fact that there's going to be promotion of alcohol um, and I think I don't know. I wonder if that is something that would be helpful to people to know because some people deal with alcoholism. They're trying to abstain. They have intense cravings. And I think, you know, knowing that there was going to be an ad at least for alcohol, you know, they would click out of the video and that might help them, you know, almost like a trigger warning. So anyways, I wanted to share this with you guys because I think it's really interesting. You know, it does, you know, obviously it can translate into skin because as I've said before, consuming alcohol in excess, it definitely, 
you know, can lead to skin problems for sure. Internally, there are a lot more things that alcohol can damage. Your heart, uh, you know, obviously your liver uh, can put you at risk for cancer or consuming alcohol in excess. And, you know, our skin is kind of a clue that it's probably not the healthiest behavior to be doing too, too much. I think there needs to be more conversations around what constitutes healthy alcohol consumption. I do know that with you know, everything over the past two years with a lot of the stay at home orders and all the stress, I do know that people unfortunately turn to alcohol as a coping strategy. It's, I have also noticed over the past, I'd say five or six years, maybe even worse with the, the lockdowns and, and everything, perhaps as a coping strategy, I have seen a lot of kind of glorification of drinking for moms. And I think that is a, that is a concerning slippery slope that I think people need to be careful of. You know, women need to be careful of, of that. If you find that, you know, you're having to, you're turning to alcohol to cope with the stresses and demands of motherhood, um, that is a red flag. I mean, it means that you, you are under too much pressure, too much stress, and you're turning to a substance that, you know, definitely is harmful to your heart and to your overall health and put you at risk for a lot of adverse health effects. Anyways, you guys, I wanted to share this with you all. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think the World Heart Federation is being a little bit too premature with saying that there's no such thing as a safe amount of alcohol for your heart? Um, or are you in favor of you know, being more restrictive with how we view, promote, consume alcohol as a society? <laughs> Anyways, you guys, I hope you liked this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.